Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Tech High School Series Division One. The regular season has come to a close, and I am excited to be back in the booth for playoffs with the legend Mango. How in the heck are we doing this today? It's fantastic having you back, and finally we are here. We are at the playoffs. You know, these this is when the teams need to be taking it a lot more seriously. Like. For the past few weeks, we've seen them experiment with new like composition, new agent meta. But now they need to put that together to see what works and play with it. You know, especially that Altoona, they are the number one seed and they're going to be the first team that's going to be playing today. I've seen them do some crazy comps. They pick some crazy comps. I've even seen, well, not them specifically, but I've seen like the Opping Sage, you know, the Viper on Ascend. There's so many new and interesting idea, but hopefully now that we're at the playoff, they can solidify a comp and stick with it. Yeah, we're going to see uh, Greater Altoona taking on Bishop Guilfoyle, that eighth seed today. Last year we had, or last season rather, we had a lot of crazy upsets as well. So, yes. I mean, these teams have had eight weeks to listen to us complain about not <laughs> buying together as a team. So I expect everybody to be at the top of their game as we head into this playoff series, uh, Mango. Yeah, it's such a it's such a simple it's such a simple thing, right? Just all right, guys, we lose the piss around. Let's just save as a team, and then buy as a team next. But we've seen so many teams fall into that pit hole where someone would just randomly buy a specter or full armor and a sheriff, and then on the third round where they're supposed to have a full buy, they don't have the money, they don't have the econ economy to full buy as a team. Then they just lose. A, a portion of the of the map to like due to like poor weaponry and yeah we've seen that so many times so hopefully but i've we've been talking about it so long so hopefully in the playoffs they can actually fix that mistake yeah you know and it was a little easier to make the playoffs last season uh you know we've added more schools right which is a great thing it's so yeah. wonderful to see the tech high school series growing so quickly and, and adding all these different schools and allowing more students to get the opportunity to, to play and just enjoy things that they love but with that being said our first game is greater altoona ctc taking on bishop guilfoyle and then a little bit later we're gonna have uh two teams that are very very close the number four seed the number five seed johnstown yep. taking on pin trafford uh you know and, and again a lot of skill on both of those teams so this first game i, I think on paper favors altoon anyway they, they've they've yep. in the last couple of seasons that we've casted they've continuously played very very well but you know you never know bishop guilfoyle could pull up an upset in this best of one so there is only you know one can send you home however that second series johnstown pin trafford a lot of uh returning members on the roster certainly very very talented and i think we're gonna have a really banger of a match in that game too but i do want to remind everybody these first sets of playoff games uh that we see uh over the next week or two are only a best of one. It's not until yep. we get into those semi, the quarterfinals, that we start seeing that best of three where consistency truly is key. So, again, all these games today, it's do or die. Your backs are against the wall. You want to push forward and continue that championship run. So it's going to be a very important game today. I do, I do think that the best of one does favor the underdogs a little bit here because, you know, it's a best of one. Anything could happen. Mm -hmm. One slip up. Maybe they lose one too many rounds like on ecos even like make one too many mistake and there you go you're out of the tournament because it's a best of one so i do think that when it comes to a best of one elimination it does favor the underdog team quite a bit like i get that greater altoona is the number one seed they're supposedly on paper the best team but you know everybody could make mistakes sometimes they're only human so they need to be careful with especially when it comes to a best of one like in a best of three all right we make a few mistakes throw away map one we still got map two and three to think about when it comes to best of one you got to really lock it in from the start absolutely i couldn't agree with you more it's it's incredibly important to play right from the get-go and i think that's why those underdogs can you know in the best of one are more likely to upset yep. but with that being said these players have worked really hard throughout the regular season we've got some stats for you as well just to kind of show how these teams have done over the regular season so we will take a look at greater altoona first you know mango bane zelati snarf claw yoshi all yoshi. names mm -hmm. that we are familiar with over these last two seasons even and again just yep. continuously applying the pressure you can see bane up top with 4.3 first bloods that combat score of 319 currently sitting in fifth position throughout the league here again uh, and that is based off your average combat score for those of you uh that at home that might not know uh basically that's how, many, how much damage they're doing uh, on average per round 
So here's the thing that interests me the most, right? Bane is the fifth seed in the entire series, right? He's the fifth best player. But look at his role. He's not a duelist. He's not an initiator. He's a controller. Mm -hmm. Hot sauce. He's, he's, your, he's your smoker, your omens, your astra, right? Your viper. And he's the fifth ranked player with an average combat score of 319.3. That just goes to show how crazy this player is. Like, there's not a single duelist that I can think that can out aim Bane at this point. Yeah, and again, you know, it just goes to speak volumes for him. And, and that combat score is crazy. That rank is crazy. But to have the most first bloods for your team as a controller, as a controller is significantly yes. much more crazy <laughs> as well. So uh, obviously, as we take a look there, Greater Altoona has played phenomenally uh, cohesively as a team throughout yep. the season. But Bishop Guilfoyle. That A seed coming in as the underdog. And look, they've been putting in work as well. Eclipse with 308, Oof. five first bloods and sitting in that seventh spot. So, you know, still ready to give uh, Bane a run for their money on the other side of things. Yeah, especially when you have a duelist that can make space, that can get that opening frag, especially a player like Eclipse. You know, it's going to make it a lot easier for your team to just follow the leader all right eclipse going in he got the first blood he even maybe get the second kill so what do i do as his teammate i just run in plant the spike and support him so i do think that having eclipse as an amazing out like a star player at, on the duelist is going to help tremendously yeah, and, and again, you know, we see Cheesewater on that controller doing very well. 191 is still very good, ranked 27th. And, you know, McCutcheon Rocks might be ranked 35th, but they have four first bloods. They're a duelist. They're doing yep. what they should as a duelist, yep. finding that initial kill, giving your team, uh, you know, that man advantage, even if you are being traded out. So certainly, you know, stats sometimes can be a little deceiving, but uh, they mm -hmm. are in the playoffs for a reason. And as much as I love Greater Altoona and a lot of these teams have returned, I I am always a huge fan of the underdog, and you certainly cannot count uh, Bishop Guilfoyle out. Yeah, exactly. We all love an underdog story, but I don't think that Greater Altoona is going to let this series slip away, man. They've been playing a so fun. They've been playing so well from last season, even. So to throw to to throw away the rounds like this, I don't think it's likely, but. I mean, we can only hope, right? So let's kick it off in the first matchup of today's Great Altoona going up against Bishop Guilfoyle on Ascent. Uh, yeah, and, tried and Altoona, true, the tried and true map. Altoona selected Ascent as well. So they were going to be defending first. Bishop Guilfoyle banning Lotus. I know we've seen a lot of Lotus this season. And honestly, it is hard for teams to defend, uh, especially with the three sites. There's long rotation. So seeing Ascent, the gentleman's pick, doesn't uh, really surprise me, especially in a best of one as we lock into that character selection screen. Eclipse on that jet. A phenomenal duelist. Now, Bane has been a controller for a while, but... Uh, I see Bane on Reyna right now, so maybe not Ooh. always. You know, I don't know how many games we've uh, had on stream of theirs throughout the season, but maybe mm -hmm. not necessarily playing the controller as much this season as we do see them uh, on Reyna here. Yeah, we see the, maybe a little bit of a roll swap here because Zilati is on the Asher, the controller. Hmm, interesting. So, you know, with that ACS, Bane is going to look and continue the high score, the high average combat score. Well, a well, looking at the comms, I do think that these are the comms that I want to see from the side of Great Altoona. You got the Sky, your initiator. You got the, the Smoke, the Astra, and you got the new character, Gecko, as well. I mm. think that in terms of agent comp, I would have to say that Great Altoona have the better agent comp. Well, they're switching off Gecko, though. And honestly, I think Gecko is super underutilized the the fact yeah. that the wingman can plant for you the fact that not only does his blind blind and you can't look away from it but his blind also tells you where enemy agents are you can watch where that blind shoots to and have a general understanding are they okay they're to the left they're not to the right because you saw the blind shoot out so i think he's very very versatile he does offer a ton to the team uh but a lot of teams maybe not quite comfortable with him yet Snarf uh, yep. on Fade, still a phenomenal choice. Uh, we see Fades on both sides, has really great intel, much like Sova, but it has a little bit extra with those Prowlers, with that alt that comes in as well. So I think even though Sova is a phenomenal pick on Ascent, we tend to see a little more of those Fades paired up with Claw on 
uh, Killjoy as well. And we've seen Claw pop off time and time again, uh, yep. you know, with Chamber and things like that. So I'm really, really excited for this one. Again, being a best of one, there is a chance that we could see the number one seed knocked out here. We saw that last year, right? I think uh, it might have been Penn Trafford. Yeah, yeah yes. just dominating throughout the entire regular season. And then we show up one day and they're not in that quarterfinal. <laughs> so, I mean, anything is possible. And as you talked about before the game got going here, if it's going to happen, the best place it could happen is in a best of one. Exactly. And look at this. On the side of Bishop Guilford, they are running the Sage. You know, Sage has fallen out of the favor, out of the meta for quite some time now. But I've seen a lot of team and a lot of players picking her back up. Let's see if she's going to go with the Sage opping. But we'll have to see on the attacker side now. Five men posted up for Bishop Guilford on that A main. Trying to rush down this A side. Ziladi though. Oh, what is he gonna do? Close the door and fall back, using that gravity well to delay a little bit of time, deciding to break the door early. Oh, that's in the defender side. But the A site will fall into the hands of Bishop Guilfoyle. Yeah, unfortunately, those knife swipes were missing at the beginning. Not fully able to officially break the door, but Zlotty able to find Cheesewater here for the first kill. Now giving him the player advantage. Yoshi gets one. Lucifer, Zlotty, Snarf all trading back and forth. But at the end, it's Claw who claws his way to the top with a headshot and a big round one lead here. Yeah, Greater Altoona, they delayed that so long, especially Zilada. You can see that him using that gravity well. And not to mention, he ran and closed the door as well. As the defender side, usually you want that door to be broken anyway, but the swipes, yeah, you were left clicking, but he was missing it. But his team, the rotation was so fast. They haven't even gotten the spike down yet, and they're already in sight, retaking it super fast. Yeah, I, I, again, just they did a phenomenal job of, of being patient, being calm, playing for that retake, even with that Zloty miscue. And, and, and again, it's about having that patience, remaining calm. Don't get flustered and, and just do what you know works for you, right? So you're comfortable. You've Ooh. been here before. And uh, that's exactly what they're going to do here. Nice. Oh, Bane finds he falls to a classic from a clip, a classic hot sauce. Somehow, he finds the kill onto Bane, but Zilati was there to trade it right back. So now it's a four on four, no man disadvantage, but they don't have the weapon. They don't have anything to deal with Greater Altoona. Yeah, you can never underestimate the classic. It is a classic for a reason, and it can get the job done in the right hands. And honestly, the, from the left to the right click is very fast. I love to shoot one or two lefts into that right. But again, you love to see it, especially when they're on that buy round trying to get any extra advantage you can. But they push out with a fierceness, and Yoshi is just getting the bread, spraying them down. He finds the two piece. Easy spray down from Yoshi and Zilati will finalize the kill as well. Two to zero already. Okay, that is just the eco round. They lost one gun. Not too shabby for Greater Altoona. Now this round is the true test. Whether or not Bishop Guilford with full buys, can they penetrate the A hole or the B hole from Greater Altoona? You can see that four Vandals and only one, uh, one Phantom. But I think Lucifer can't afford shields here because sage utility are a lot uh, are quite expensive uh, yeah honestly uh, i think a lot of people especially if they're not used to playing because i recently i've been playing more and i'd swap over play a different character you don't realize <laughs> how expensive some of the utility for these characters are we got some big trades here early though bishop kilvoyle is going to lose too if he's able to get on the site how fast and he shoots the head from the hip he dips him a whip trying to take the site but snarf and lucifer are going to trade out now two to two there's lottie with a big pick on that flank though and now once more the player advantage but eclipse no health either then Eclipse, what a fantastic entry. He just dashes in five HP and he finds another kill on that B site. But unfortunately, the spike was dropped behind Hot Sauce. He had to go back and fight for the spike. He had, he had no option there. He was extremely low. Uh, great entry, but unfortunately, Greater Altoona, they, they played that so well. They see that Eclipse dashing in to B site. All right, what do we do after that? All right, we'll just take B main away from you. We'll just control the spike, force you to come back and fight us again. 
Yeah, it's almost like they didn't really push a as a unit there. We saw Jet get on site really quickly. So the fact that they were able to flank all the way and still find members in Garage just tells me that maybe they weren't quite pushing quick enough with their entry here. But nonetheless, Eclipse, so dirty with the Sheriff. Meanwhile, simultaneously, three headshots coming out, two from Claw and Greater Altoona CTC is showing you exactly why they're the number one seed. Man, the trades are so fast lightning fast at that they they know what they're supposed to do right one peak from each angle and all right all right you get this kill i get this kill and just like that everybody falls within an instant well this is the fifth round another buy round here for bishop guilfoyle let's see if they can actually secure their first round all right, here they go, heading toward B, but no, Bane with the God. Odin, and the Odin will be the Bane of anyone's existence if you get caught like a deer oh, in headlights in the 4K no. all day. Bane showing you why his combat score is so high. Bane just letting it rip there with the Odin. One clip in the chamber just sprays them all down like Zila. I mean, Eclipse, he had the idea, he saw the turret, but... There was another guy behind the Killjoy turret, and it was Bane with the Odin just spamming, just spraying them all down, man. That was another buy round, Hot Sauce. And they yeah. can't convert. They have to save ones again. Get out of my way. Ooh, that's just rough. And Bane's going to switch it up, try to go to the A site here. But uh, fortunately for Bishop Guilfoyle, they've kind of detected that, you know, or kind of maybe guessed right again here. So kind of heading toward the B site. We'll see if maybe they can make something happen. Well, Bane with the Odin once again, rotate all the way back to short. Yuki does find the first kill on Zilati, but Bane scoped in. He sprays, he finds one. Can he find another? Lucifer stuck between a rock and a hard place using his ability, but he can't run. Slow peeks into the Odin and bye-bye. His life is gone. But the B side though, look at this. Eclipse already making his way onto that B side. Snuck out of the smoke as well. Two versus four. If anyone can do it, it's Eclipse. He hears the Prowler, lets it pass. Watch waiting, buying time to peek out. He finds a kill onto Snarf, making it a 2v3. He finds another one onto Claw. Eclipse doing it all on his own. Fall back onto site, 2v2 now. 77 HP, you can hear the Odin spam tagged, a tagged up a little bit. As Yoshi push, cheese water, finds one. And he find the last Bane, 1v2. Eclipse, he have done so much, but can he do it? The end. Time is ticking, Bane. What will you do? I think they've done it, Hot Sauce. Bane will find a kill, but it's over. Oh. They will clutch it, Bishop Guilfoyle. And Eclipse will Yo. find their first round. And what a play and from Bane Eclipse. And tried to get fancy with it there. Pop the alt to avoid, uh, you know, he thought maybe he was going to avoid that that bomb exploding. But Bane is actually going to die there as well uh, to that bomb explosion. But, Bane, you know, here's the thing about the Odin, right? Not only is it an insane weapon, especially in the right hands, it's pretty OP. But it can get the uh, you can get in the other team's head when you're using it yep, right it's it very frustrating oh why's this guy using an odin things like that you know what i mean it's so cheap it's a noob cannon whatever it might be but it, it's as much as important physical as mental game and right now i think that odin might be getting in the head of bishop guilfoyle a little bit oh and here we go again bane the same position as he takes out their star player bishop guilfoyle losing eclipse already and bane Still in the same position, walked up super close, cheese water, he destroys the turret, but unknowing that Bane was close, Claw finds another kill as well, leaving Lucifer alone, Vandal in hand, the sprays go wild as Bane takes them out, and flawless for Greater Altuna, 6 to 1. Yeah, I mean... Again, just putting in the work that they need to. There's a reason they're the number one seed. Uh, you know, there's a reason that Bane is ranked number five across all of these high schools here, right? 12 and two, Zlotty eight and one, Claw six and two. And even though Bane might be that powerhouse, if you look at the, you know, the kill to death here, the whole squad, they just cohesively play well together. They have solid rotations, good setups. And, and in my mind, they have to have phenomenal comms as well. Yep, I... I and another thing, their trades are extremely fast. On the side of Altoona, Eclipse, super aggressive, one HP, dashes out, Claw finds the first. 
but Eclipse is stuck. The scan! He will get pinged, and he will go down. Three versus two, now Bishop Guilfoyle. They are so isolated, they are spread out. Van Bander. There he's gonna get knife, but Claw shoves the gun in his face. Yuki finds the third kill. Now on for the ace clutch. Spike dropped at mid. He has a lot of HP to work with and a lot of time as well. Yeah, just the way that, that Altuna uses their utility together, and we saw that KJ pushing off of that Fade Prowler as well. It just goes to speak volumes for how well that they use that utility. They set up with the comms that we talked about earlier, but with that being said, now we see Yuki putting on a great performance so far this round, now trying to make his way through mid, and the alarm bot will be triggered, and with that, the intel is all that Altuna needs. Even investing the Nightfall into this round of 1v2. Yuki has no sound right now. He doesn't know where they are. The trail as well. Showing them. Oh, oh no, but he can't. He can't see him. He didn't see him. And Snarf with the Operator headshots him. And will secure a great Altoon at the seventh round. But Yuki, he solo pushed onto A site, finding three kill there. Yeah, just uh, a phenomenal job by Yuki in the end, unfortunately. Just maybe stuck his nose out a hair too far when trying to <laughs> pop that flash. Snarf certainly going to make him pay with that op. And we've got ops. We've got Odins. And Altoona is just looking and feeling incredibly dangerous at the moment. Only one round so far for Bishop Guilfoyle. Now this, in my opinion, this is a little more of a defensive map. Uh, you know, you can do well on offense, mm -hmm. you can work yep. with utility right, but I, I think that Bishop Guilfoyle needs to find at least three rounds here, uh, you know, if they want to have a, a solid shot in the second half. Great smoke, though, cutting off that vision from the Operator Claw, just spamming down, but Bane is on the hunt, backstabs one, but he doesn't check the left to miss out. Bane, he knows that Van Banner is here, recon does not matter, and Bane still gets the kill, oh my. The scope in, but finally Cheese Water will shut him down. But two on three, Eclipse still alive. The sprays finds one onto Yoshi, but he still needs to find two more. Spike is still at mid, one minute on the clock. Dash activated, peeks out, finds Claw. Oh my. 150. He turns it into a 1v1 now. Eclipse. Beautiful shot. A star you player. I can't believe it, bro. That shot at mid right there to the dash, able to stay alive. And now trying to use the big brain, though, and rotate all the way around to A. Snarf sitting here comfortably, though. And this could be a well-read play. At some point, Snarf's going to hear him trudging through <gasps> A and does. And with does. that noise cue, he left. did. He turned right to look for it. He has the op in play. Now, oh, no. how quickly does Eclipse come around the corner? No oh, dash. And he walks into the cross here of Snarf. Uh, you can't That's twice in a row. Up. That's twice in a row for Snarf. Two scoped headshot, but I mean, Eclipse, he wasn't expecting Snarf to be here, right? But that sound cue, he was running just a bit too much on that mm -hmm. rotation. And Snarf just insanely smart, picked that up immediately, readjust his aim, scoped in, waiting for Eclipse to walk in. But yeah, exactly. Like, that play at mid, the kill onto onto claw that kill was insane bro i feel like people don't use the shift key until you get up into like high plat diamond the shift key <laughs> the shift key is your best friend and honestly people underestimate how much uh you know intel is important in yep. this game whether it be audio cues or utility cues there's so much importance to early intel and now snarf ready to have another head to head with eclipse and he One will be eclipsed remaining. with the op once Five more down, mid. Man, 5 we won. What do you do in this situation? Man, Batter does find one, but he can't find a second. Man, yeah, you're, you're actually so right. The intel in this game, especially on a map like Ascend, it's so small, right? Ascend is relatively small, a small map. Like, when you're rotating from top mid to A side, if you don't shift walk from top mid, they're gonna hear you. The defender, they are gonna hear you coming to that A side. Yeah, I mean, if you're in garage or even market or on cat, mm -hmm. it just there's so much audio yeah. throughout the mid or the site. So there's a lot to be heard as well. And again, I can't stress it, stress it enough that uh, the shift key can be a huge friend there. Unfortunately, you know, I think Eclipse thought he had just a little bit more time. And I also think yep. that he thought that that fade was going to rotate toward B. The spike was kind of near B, he had to go through tiles. So I think cool. he was just kind of assuming that fade, he was going to bait fade in that direction. And somebody 
finally able to silence Bane. It's Wan Ban. Thank you, man. Dropping the body and the Odin. We'll see now in a 4v4 if they have what it takes to clutch another round. Ooh, I like this. The fake dash from Eclipse. You can see on a the minimap, they pulled the rotation away from that B side. There's three defender on that A, but they need to go. They need to they need to just go to the B side. You will not kill well, the rest does come so out. so long here, though, it looks like there's a bit of a rotation going to that B side. Ooh, so the double kind of, fake. If they can remain silent here and find this yep. push, they need to figure out something early. Oh, They're giving no. way too much time. Yeah, and with that fade coming that's in, or, or the haunt, you can see that sure, everybody back in heaven. Killjoy remaining tight. So again, <laughs> four three seconds, plenty of time. They could push through mid here, maybe find a pick on Cat and continue to B site. Snarf with that operator, the same position, Eclipse. He knows that someone is here. First shot fires off, doesn't connect. Waiting for his teammate, but a gravity well. Almost pulled him in. Claw will find the kill on the cheese water. Oh and my! not even the updraft can save you, Eclipse. Because Snarf will just pluck you out of the air. Four versus three now. Time is ticking. 15 seconds. They have no spike. They have to give up this round. There's no chance. Yuki finds the kill, but the time is not there. Five seconds left. And they will forfeit this round. Snarf absolutely playing on point today from the flicks to the shots, the intel, the patience, the, the crosshair placement, the flick up to the sky there on that last shot. Phenomenal. And this is what you want for your team, especially if you're the number one seed. First playoff of the game. It is a best of one, but you are coming out with a fierceness. You're coming out and saying, hey, everybody, all eyes on us. We yep. are the team to beat. It's not just a game, it's a message sent throughout the entire league. Like, all right, guys, this is what you're expecting. This is what gold standard looks like. And look at this, four, three operators, one Odin on the side of Altoona. Yoshi, though, the spray go oh. through the wall as well. Cheese water. That box no. was paper thin. No cover No hell for cheese. No hell for cheese either. They heard the Odin being sprayed. Nobody peeking with cheese, really just leaving behind that cardboard box to get dropped. The spike is tucked over there as well. And gonna make things just a bit more difficult from the Odin to the op and now to the Vandal. Bane says, I can I could do it all, mom. Well, now it's on to Eclipse yet again. The star player for Bishop Guilfoyle on a one versus two on a mission. Oh, he saw To the save bot. their team, to prolong this match, to have any glimmer of a hopes in winning. He needs to win this round. 2e1, he has a lot of time here, but that alarm bot, that's, that's the difficult, that's the obstacle he needs to get past. If he walks in, yeah, there you go, the intel, it's given, Bane, prime the flash, double peaking, 30 seconds, Eclipse peaks, and Bane will find a kill. And that will be the 11th round, the first half for Greater Altoona, 11 to 1. Yeah, unfortunately, you know, we've seen some 9-3 curses. I've seen some crazy 10-2 comebacks, but 11-1 to 1 is insanely difficult. And, I mean, if they're going to have any chance at all, it's going to be on this pistol round. They're going to need to secure the pistol round and run away with it, never look back. It's going to be tough to do against this Altoona team. We've seen them with the Odins, with the Ops. They're out here for the meme play, and they're just doing it all day. 11-1 to 1, needing two more to secure it up and head It'll just a little bit further into that playoff run. Man, you can call the Odin whatever you want, the meme gun, the noob can, it doesn't matter when it's so it. effective, especially on a map like Ascend where every single wall is like just wall bangable. And uh, it's actually crazy. Look at this though, cheese water. A little bit of a cheese comp, but no, he runs away. Back turn as Yoshi, just executing him from the back. Oh no, the sight falls into the hand of Altoona. When Banger Pigs falls into Yoshi once again, everyone just falls. Lucifer trades it back though, finds the first, and Yuki with the second as well, 2v1. Eclipse still alive, but Yuki can't survive for that long, 1v3. Of course, it has to be Eclipse, but 22 HP. Push from every single position, Bane will claim his life and match point. Yeah, again, just a tough position to be in here. And, uh, you know, it's 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 it can be a struggle. Unfortunately for Bishop Guilfoyle, they're going to have to really just force up and buy out for the entirety of this game. And again, 
going to be going up against a guardian, some specters, some armor as well, or maybe even a bulldog. But, uh, you know, I might say a lot of things about the Odin, but I love it because I love getting in my <laughs> enemy's head. I am that guy who will spam the wall with the Odin. I do any cheap trick I can because I want to get in your head. I mean, Valorant is a psychological game, you know? Oh, jeez, water! Almost, almost got caught there. But they will forfeit this A site and look to try to retake S5 here as they fall back. Cheese water has no. to smoke intact, but it has to be oh, careful. No. And, and I always tell people, you never want to be sitting anywhere in the open, whether it's a smoke or not, but you never want to be sitting somewhere with your utility out. There's nothing more frustrating than getting killed with utility in your hand. So, again, there's certain things you can do to kind of thwart that away. But the Odin <laughs> will come in and snarf, will snarf them down. This time with the Odin, not the op, but what an absolute clinic, right? A sh just, just a showcase put on here by Greater yeah. Altoona. Yeah, everyone was playing well. You know, we talked a lot about Bane, but in my opinion, in this in, in this matchup between Great Altoona and Bishop Guilfoyle, I have to give my MVP to Snarf. He's played phenomenally in this game, like the the operator, the intel, the the recon, everything. He just gives his teammate everything there. And and man, Snarf, my I, MVP. I, I, even though even though you don't have the MVP on the board, yeah, you give it to Bane. But now, Snarf, you are my MVP. Snarf, insanely good, but you can't not give it to Bane. Combat score, 465. Closest person, 261. Nowhere close. Six okay. first bloods. Add everybody else's first bloods up, you barely get six. Bane, it's, it's Snarf did phenomenal. Amazing mm -hmm. clutches on a couple key rounds, but you cannot take the MVP away from Bane, who just absolutely destroyed. It was a playground out there for him today. I mean, yeah, I do agree with you. He does have the kills, but not still. In my opinion, in my heart, Snarf is the unsung hero, you know? Like, he's busy scanning. He's busy giving the Prowler the information. He doesn't have time to go find the kills. And when it is time for him to clutch, consistently clutching the round and securing the round for his teammate, I'm saying it right here, right now. The unsung hero, Snarf, you are my MVP. Hey, it's okay to be wrong every now and then. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, shots fired. Uh, no, no, but certainly, honestly, <laughs> I, if you could give the whole team an MVP, you, yeah. you would because uh, everybody played very, very well from claw to the whole crew. Uh, again, from from crosshair placement to rotations to utility, uh, they just played the game of Valorant very, very well on Ascent. It shows you why they're the number one seed. You know, Bishop Guilfoyle certainly did very, very well uh, throughout the regular season as well. Yeah. And one of those new schools that came on, right? So hopefully we see even more schools next season. Uh, and, and again, hopefully we see Bishop Guilfoyle even hungrier next season because they have a lot of talent on that team. And I, I look forward, it's amazing how much these teams grow and the work that they put in the offseason as well so again i look forward to seeing these returning schools and even more yeah. schools uh but with that being said mango i believe we're going to take a short break when we come back we're going to have one heck of a match for you so don't go anywhere
Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Tech High School Series Division One playoffs. We've had a crazy uh, first match already at 13-1, but I believe that this next one is going to be a banger and much closer. We have two teams that are very, very close. Uh, I think it's either the fourth and fifth seed or the third and yep, fourth Yep, you're seed. absolutely right. It's fourth and fifth seed, yep. Okay, there it is. Yeah, you can see it on the screen right there. So Johnstown versus Penn Trafford. Johnstown is uh, slightly favored here, it would seem, being that fourth seed. But, uh, you know, I'm, I'm a Penn Trafford fan. I, I like what <laughs> has done over the last season. She's uh, incredibly talented. Quarters on there. I know they lost a couple big key members uh, in that last season, I believe. So uh, it'll be interesting to see how they perform. But I, nonetheless, it's certainly going to be a very, very exciting match tonight. Hot sauce. He's like, as a fellow race main, M&A is right. my favorite. <laughs> I mean, uh, yeah, Penn Trafford and Johnstown, it's going to be a more competitive matchup between these two, hopefully. But yeah, Penn Trafford last season was so unexpected. It was such a major upset for me because last season I had all my, my, my back of coins on Penn Trafford winning the entire thing. But then I remember it was like a reschedule. And when we come back, on the caster seat, like, oh, they were gone. Like, what happened? Yeah, no one got upset. Yeah, I was exactly. upset about it, you know? Yeah, so hopefully, finally, they can have a chance to showcase what they got. Penn Treffer, the fifth seed, going up against the slightly better seeding Johnstown on that fourth seed. Hopefully, it's going to be a, be a more competitive matchup, not just a 13-0 blowout, you know, more enjoyable matchup for everybody. I'm I'm pretty certain it's going to be much closer, and we have some uh, we have some regular season stats to take a look at that will just might maybe show you a little bit uh, of more info. As you can see, Amp up on top, ranked number four. We saw Bain uh, number fifth in that previous game, but here we've got Amp number four, three twenty seven on the combat score, three point two first bloods. Zyver right below him as a duelist with three point three first bloods as well. So uh, we've seen Amp Zyver pop off a ton of times yep. as well you know, whether it be Reyna or Jet. So uh, certainly excited to see them back out on the field here today. Yeah, exactly. And Suom Juni and, and River, they're just the supporting cast, you know. Like, not, uh, they are the supporting cast, but they're putting up some good numbers as well. Uh, almost 200 average combats were for Zuoms here. Yeah, they are, these are all five members that they don't change, huh, Hot Sauce? Like I've Absolutely. seen that most teams they don't change they have some roster match up uh switch up you know like some come in some go out but on the side of Johnstown they're all just five they don't change at all yeah and three players in that top twenty five so certainly uh, you're just a whole crew of very talented players meanwhile on the other side of things we've got some pin trafford regular season stats atop up there m a uh, name that we had mentioned currently rank eighth and just below that 300 combat score with 2.7 first bloods quarter as well another name we are very familiar with and uh, a hello might be on the bottom for the team here but uh an incredibly talented player as well that we see put in work time and time again on those sentinels so uh, honestly, if you look at the ranks and the stats, it's it's pretty evenly matched up here. Yep. I mean, they are the fourth and fifth seed. So respectively, they're, it's going to be, it's a close game. It's a close matchup. Looking at the stats, you can't tell what's going to happen. I can't wait to hop into the server. And we're going to be playing on Haven as well. So John Sound is going to be starting us off on the defender side and Penn Treffer on the attacker side. I do have to say on Haven, the attacker side is the side you want to start, the start on because you're going to, farm those points up it is a very attacker sided map on haven because remember it's a three-sided map so you've got to farm those points going into the second half just close it out yeah and, and we see lotus being banned again and um you know pretty pretty common thing i think lotus being that newer map also a three-sided map so it's very attacker uh friendly or or, or favored and so i think mm -hmm. maybe that's why we see johnstown picking haven you know maybe pin trafford bans it because they don't like those three plant maps so we have johnstown coming and picking haven something that they maybe feel comfortable on and, and again it is a very attacker sided map because there are three sites uh more than often than not you know the attacking can find and push in and find those initial picks kind of giving them that player advantage meanwhile the defender having to rotate around so sage is still very viable on this map uh you know with those recent buffs to uh to cypher we see a lot more of cypher as well so certainly expect to see that here killjoy very capable of holding down an a or c site uh relatively alone so um again just interested as we get into this character select scene screen and uh, see what they opt to go with here mango 
Yo, M&A though, already insta-locking on that jet. So Haven, you know, race, yes, it is viable, but I do have to say that Jet is the more mainstream duelist right now, especially on Haven. And you look at this, on the side of Johnstown though, Zyver already hovering that Phoenix. So maybe Zyver and Amp gonna go for that double duelist. Yeah, there you go, the double duelist comp. The Reyna and the Phoenix here. So very, very strong Asian, Asian comp on the defender side, but they don't have any Sentinels. How are they gonna hold with no Sentinels here? Yeah, you know, uh, you know, maybe uh, they firepower, just plan to do it. Firepower. They plan to do it all on that offensive side, you know. And uh, <laughs> I mean, we've seen Amp get crazy on that Reyna, uh, Zyver as well. And again, you know, Wait, Phoenix, what? Phoenix virtually had a zero um, zero pick rate up until this buff. So it's good to see more of Phoenix. I know you're getting excited because we have three duelists here. <laughs> but oh. I, I, again, if, if there's a team that's going to do it, it's Greater Johnstown. They are fearless. They are comfortable and confident in their ability to shoot. They know this is an attacker heavy map. They're going to start out on defense. But again, you know, we've seen some crazy things. And, and in a league, in a high school league like this, this is something that you certainly can get away with. Yes, you definitely can. But R River, maybe a miss pick because he was just switching those agents left and right but either i'm not sure if they're locked in once they locked in do they have like a re like a rematch sorry like a rematch a remake I, I don't know about that to be honest yeah i don't know about that either <laughs> but either way three duelists come maybe we run with it maybe we don't but definitely it is viable it is definitely viable on the defender side you know just Raw aim, raw firepower. Just take a map control away from the attacker side. Cut off one side of the map because remember, Haven is a three-sided map. So if you take control of A main, there, there's only going to be two side realistically for the attacker to go to. Okay, so maybe so... I think I think they yeah, they were kind of communicating last second. So uh, they're wanting to possibly. <laughs> Switch. They, they they don't want three duelists it would appear but uh you know again those are things that you know you should kind of talk about before you head into the match and and things that uh should kind of be well known so uh you know i don't know i don't know what's going to happen here especially being a best of one right you're the fourth you're the yeah fifth. exactly you want to make it into those best of three games but uh you know here maybe you uh had a little bit of a misstep you know, if, if, if it was up to Penn Trafford and I was that other team, I would be toxic. I would say, no, you can't choose. That's the player you selected, and we're going to run it down, baby. Let's go. <laughs> a little bit of a bias here coming out of hot sauce, you know, got to root for Penn Trafford. But, yeah, I think it's – when I saw that pick, I knew it was a mistake. But then when I saw the agent screen, River rocking the the Yorun uh, comb, the comb knife, I, I thought it was intentional. I mean – I like the comb knife. Yeah, that, I, 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 I was so sure it was a misclick. And then we locked, we, we hopped onto the server. I saw the, the comb knife. I was like, oh, wait a second. He intentionally picked him. But yeah, three duelists. I'm not sure what the plans are, but maybe we get a remake. Two duelists. Okay. Okay. We got words that we are going to restart the matchup. Like, you know, no three, no three duelists. No shenanigans. Dang. Restart it real quick. They dodged a bullet there. I would have not mm. let him out of that one. I would have not let him out of that one. <laughs> it is their it is their fault though. Let's be honest. It is their fault for picking the wrong agent. Luckily, we can give them like a pass here, like a get out of jail free card. Let them pick Pen, again. Pen Trafford, Pen Trafford said okay. You know, Pen Trafford was yeah. nice enough to say, okay, go ahead Good and you know, we, we want to beat you at your best. But uh, you know, that was me. <laughs> I, I'm cutthroat, right? Like I when I play, I play to win. I come to win. I'm cutthroat. So I mean, uh, hey, Pe maybe Pen Trafford is just that confident. You know, they're they here to, they're here to play. They're here to win, but they want to win fair and square. Like hey, we know you guys picked the wrong agent. Pick the right agent, and we'll still we'll still beat you. Maybe that's what they're going for. You know, great sportsmanship all around. That's what I like to see. No tea bags, just great sportsmanship. Yeah, for sure, for sure. I'm, I'm glad that they're a lot nicer than I am. <laughs> <laughs> you, hear it, you, hear, you heard it here first. Never put hot sauce on a team. Hey, you know, some of these guys are getting, or guys and girls are getting close to graduating. You know what I mean? And the real world is cruel out there. So I'm just trying to get you prepped and ready. <laughs> All right, here we go. The second time. Hopefully this time around, we get the right agent select. So let's hop in back. Let's hop back into the server here. 
Let's see what river. Okay, a smoke. Okay, brimstone. Good pick. No more Yoru here, I see. I, yeah, I imagine we see everybody just picking the same thing except it yeah. would be would be the, yep, yep. Uh, the swippy swap there. It's only fair. You can't take a peek at the enemy's like agent comp and then like adjust, right? right? That's just not fair. That would be that would be a little crazy. That would be a little crazy, but you can see that two sages here on Haven. Interesting. Like I mentioned in the first in the first matchup, Sage has definitely fallen out of favor, especially in the meta. But two think, Sage already. I think we see. I, I feel like I see a lot more Sage on ha Haven though, just because it is a three site. A lot of times mm -hmm. they like to wall the entrance to B so that they can kind of back off and play more A or more Garage C centric. I see. Um, and then you know once that wall breaks or if someone's breaking that wall, kind of allow one from A to rotate to A link and one from Garage or so to rotate to C link and kind of cover. So I think it's uh, more viable than it used to be. Obviously with our heels taking a hit and stuff. Uh, you know, we don't see her as much, but I think on some of these mm -hmm. three site maps, she's definitely more viable. I would I would want to see a Killjoy more than a Sage, though, especially on the Greater Johnstown site. Like, look, you already have the KO, right? I want to see a Killjoy. I like, I li okay, the Sage pick is okay with me, but I would rather see a Killjoy rather than a KO or maybe a Sage even. Just swap those two for, for a K Killjoy. I'll be happy with it. Oh, okay. So you don't, you don't, uh, you're, you're not a big fan. I, I, I'm going to agree because I love Killjoy. So, you know, I'm, I'm right there with you. Mm -hmm. this Especially time. on this Haven, time. you know, you can, you can hold two side single handedly, but okay, here we go. Pen Trafford on the attacker side, though, a fast A play here, but there are three defender on that A side for Greater Johnstown. Zyver up close and personal. Flash in hand, flashes out. Pillow, though, gets flash and gets taken out immediately with the ghost but a trade from quarter we'll pull it back to a four on four but the quick rotation hot sauce look at this they book it to see sight no one is there absolutely love it i'd love to know who's igling as well but a beautiful play be just drawn out nicely quick rotations as well we talked about has an attacker favor map and this is why right you have those mm -hmm. advantages you can push the sites and there's long rotations if you're able to get away with that sprint now the uh, defending team has to then work back to you for that retake and you just set yourself up nicely. So a great job by Pin Trapper uh, calling the C plant. And Zero setting up the trap with that lurk as well. Find a kill onto River. So no more smokes available for Greater Johnstown. The time is ticking. They need to go for this retake. Amp, he has the overheal, but he needs to find a kill. Check, clear, backside, but gets dinged immediately. Hello and quarter will tag team him. Take him on quarter, the triple kill. Suom left alone and um, hello will find that last kill as well. Penn Trafford, a fantastic pistol round. They got the opening kill on A site and they quickly rotate away to a C site that has no defender. Yeah, again, you know, they they fell, they got that first trade, things looked a little grim, but that quick rotation really just changed things. And unfortunately, Johnstown wasn't sure if they were rotating until the plant went down. So again, just not quite able to keep up to par with the pace. And, you know, M&A no longer on Rays. We see him rocking that jet here as well, which it took me a second to notice, but maybe uh, we're in for a little treat with some uh, M&A jet action. Yeah, she's been playing a lot of Jet. I've seen it, but Zyver though. Oh, and again, the second time, the Trailblazer will push him back. No, Quarter won't let him run, won't let him escape. Takes him out for the second time in a row here. The first blood. Now, A side falls, 4v5 retake for Greater Johnstown. Yeah, Quarter said you could outrun the dog, but you can't outrun the Spectre, baby. Finally gets the drop, find the player advantage, spots one in heaven as well. There's actually two up there, however, looking for the jumping. Right click is amp and won't eliminate and pillow finding two. The double kill coming up big, amp all alone, 50 health. Ooh. Will be able to overheal here though, and with that gives himself a little bit more, but being in that 4v1, the oh. the right click, in the right click we trust, baby. Let's go, amp able to find two before, before being taken out. So able to grab a couple guns, a little bit of economy, away from Pin Trapper as they head into this bonus round. I mean, great shots all around from Pen Trapper, especially Quarter as well, finding that early pick onto Zyver. Like, he ran past the Trailblazer, but he can't run past Quarter, just spraying him down from the back. Okay, 2 and 0. Oh. They got the easy round. Now, this is the true test, the real test. 
the buy round from Johnstown. Look at this, a little bit of a change in the meta, in the play style from Penn Trafford, deciding to play mid, but that Sage wall, Zyra oh, will be out no. and buy two kill. Finally, Zero will take him out, but the damage has been done as Amp with the support finds the first kill onto Zero as well. Yeah, that was unfortunate. I thought MA was going to be able to find the trade, but the Spectre unfortunately not able to do it as Zyver clutches up with that Vandal Amp on the Jiggle Peak. Has spotted Pillow outside of garage doors here. Quarter tucked up just in that window here. And again, with that two player disadvantage, needs to try to find at least one more kill, hopefully, uh, as they can, you know, kind of chip away at the economy on the other side of things. 2v4, it is still a doable round. But Pen Trafford decide to walk to the A side. You can see them checking every single corner. They don't want to walk in to someone just waiting, lurking in a corner somewhere. But this Trailblazer will give the intel to the Greater John Sound that they are hitting that A side. Yeah, we see the rotation coming in as well. KO already up in heaven. Oh, and you never want to get caught with your knife out. That is unfortunate. Yeah, River, two easy kills for him. We'll give John Sound the first round. But man, Zyver, he has the ultimate, but he just decides to peek. No flash. I don't think he, I don't think he even flash here. He just drive peek everything. He finds the spray transfer onto the second kill. And Amp with the support as well. A great initiative from Johnstown taking the fight to Pen Trafford, not waiting for them to attack, but just taking the initiative and attack them back. Yeah, I mean, it's just one of those things, too. And I feel like, you know, it's more common in pugs to try to get to that site with your knife out of things. But anytime you're crossing an open sight line like that, yep. you just, especially if you don't have the intel, uh, you know, you need to have that gun out, especially someone as talented as quarter five and one, constantly finding the kills and doing great things for the team. So, you know, maybe just a little anxious to get to that site, but nonetheless, back into a full buy round here, hopefully. And we'll see what kind of work they can apply here as they begin to pressure mid. Did he get a wall bang? Zyber finds the first kill on the quarter as well. Through the mid wall, giving them an early man advantage here. Yeah, honestly, that window is so hard to peek, uh, you know, or even jiggle without some type of flash and ample step it off the dissipate, able to disengage and get to safety as well. A secondary blind will come and play, and he has an idea. He's to the right, and with that, I'll step out, pop the head, and get the bread, pushing out one more. That triple kill, and amp has got me amped. Sheesh. I mean, there you go. No Sentinel, no problem. Just a raw firepower, raw mechanical skill there. And showcasing what he got. Just popping heads left and right, using the dismiss to its perfection as well. Gets the first kill, dismiss out, and then re-engage with the entire team. I really like how Johnstown like, re-engages a fight. Instead of one guy running it down, he falls back, and then all three members push back in as a unit. That is fantastic. Yeah, you know, and unfortunately for Hello, he didn't relocate or put up a trip there. Just kind of stayed in that same spot in Garage. So once you've kind of been spotted, you never really want to re-peak the same angle, right? You always want to kind of try to uh, move a bit as well. You don't want to give them any type of easier shot than they might already have. And with that, Zyver looking to flash and step out at mid once more. Didn't spot anybody just yet. We'll fall back a bit. But right now, Penn Trafford being very slow and methodical on this push. Oh no, Zyver peeked out a little bit too much as quarter finds 2k. One from Garage and one at mid. And now the Trailblazer will come out, spots out one member at the backside. MA will dash, try to find the target, but Zuom though, he holds on, he finds no! another, but the right click from quarter, that's a quadra. One more for the ace, 3v1, Spike has already planted. What and a River. dirty play from quarter. I said in the right click, we trust. And I, I always <laughs> say the Bulldog is one of the most highly underrated weapons. It is so good at distance or up close. Quarter finding three, swapping to the pistol. The right click for the Quadra. Can he find the Penta and the Ace? 1v3, the footstep. He's heard him. 19 HP. And of course, Quarter steps in for the Ace. Giving a Pen Trafford that third round. But my, oh my, what fantastic shots there it was not easy the first two kill 
it was almost impossible for quarter to find the third one with the bulldog and then swaps to the right click jumping mid-air just pop someone in the head and then yeah. getting that ace as well from the first two kills with the bulldog to the second two equally as tough having to swap to the classic mm -hmm. before he sent him packing and you better believe he's hungry for that ace 10 and two quarter on top as pin trapper looks to find a little more on the offensive side of things yeah quarter already starting off hot here but now MA dashes oh, in! The trailblazer oh, was perfect! He was stunned up, but Juni was there for the trade. On to quarter. It's there as well. Finds a trade. 4v3. Spike goes down. John Sound, they need to retake this. Do they have a wall here? And Pillow will utilize that wall by themselves a little bit of time. Pressuring them, Amp. The neural theft will give them all the intel possible as River peaks from above. Finds the cheeky kill. Full set back to a 3v3 and now it's very doable. As River, he has the ultimate as well. But will he use it? Yes, he will put it on side, but zero! Oh, the, the collateral. collateral! The spray! Sheesh, boys! Let's go! River had a dirty flick from heaven, able to get back to safety, but in the end, Zero becomes the hero of the round, the collat that sent him packing. And one more round for Penn Trafford, now 4-2. to two. They need to find as many rounds as they can on this offensive side of things, and uh, it's certainly going to be tough with the way Amp's been playing. Uh, yeah, and you can see that Johnstown, their comp is a little bit hurt. It's hurting them a little bit because they have nothing to slow the enemy team down. They only have the raw aim, the manpower. But if one of them fall, they have no utility utility to fall back onto. So they need to be getting these kills. And it's not a guarantee that Zyver always finds the 2k early on. Well, here we go. The second charm's the charm. Flashes out, but the counter flash, the paranoia. Push him back. Zoms will find the first, and Zyra will find the second one as well. Ooh, but Pillow, though. Find that one up long as well. Suoms does get the trade, however. A hello and back and forth. But Juni will find a hello tucked into the cubby there. And now three to four. And I feel like, honestly, if you hit that four or five mark on defense, you're doing pretty mm -hmm. well. Yeah, definitely. Especially when you have two duelists to play with as well. So attack side is where you want to be playing, right? Rush it down, but they don't have a jet nor a raise. So I don't know how they're gonna gap close, especially on that C push. That C push is gonna be extremely difficult for them because they have no one to dash in, make space. So they're just gonna have to run out with the flashes. All right, well, we'll see if they can maybe take some advice here right now, though. Penn Trafford once more pressuring toward the A-side. Here comes the smoke. Reyna with a late rotation, trying to be that second member on site. Oh, that second smoke didn't really hit there. I've got your track. Yeah, I think there's, there's a, a gap, gap, but they are aware, though. Yeah, Penn Trafford, they are aware that there's a gap. There's a possibility that someone might peek out here as River's trying to do. The Seeker will push him back. Smokes will fall, so 5v5 retake. Ultimate's available. But Zuoms, Pillow will find the first on to the run it back as Amp pursuits in, pushing forward. But River will find a kill on the quarter. Zero finds 2k, and now it's oh. all up to Hello, and he can't hold on. Dawn Town, yeah. a fantastic retake, fast as lightning. Yeah, and kind of kind of some unnecessary peaks from Pin Trafford there as well. Not really, you know, they have the plant down, they have the capability of playing a little more time. Um, but we see a hello there peaking heaven as well. And uh, unfortunately, I think maybe just some kind of peaks that weren't necessarily necessary, so to speak. But, uh, you know, <laughs> so sometimes uh, that ego hits hard and you want to get those kills. They Maybe they wanted to set up a crossfire there. So one was... I, I, I see this. There was a guy holding hell position, crossfiring with the graffiti. But unfortunately, that... Sage wall just makes it really difficult for the teammate to do anything. So Am just runs in using the dismiss and not to mention Zyver giving them so much intel with that run it back. Just like, all right, guys, there's this player over here, this player over there. So the second player, which is Am, he has all the info he needs. So he just pre-aims every angle to peek out with. Yeah, you know, Zyver peeks out 
mid here from Garage almost every round. He tosses a flash and he peeks out. So I would love for Pin Trafford to kind of realize this and kind of know. And maybe, and maybe that's what they're doing here as we see the <laughs> shot ring by as Ziver able to duck back to safety here and head on over to the C site. A bit of a rotation coming in early from Johnstown based off the little intel they saw here, though. And with that, a push onto the A site could work wonders for Pin Trafford. By the way, I love their readjust. Johnstown, they know they can't hold the A-side, so what do they do? Let's play retake. And look at this, Zwams. Oh, he doesn't uh -oh. check. Quarter, uh -oh. trigger, discipline, uh -oh. go find the kill on to Zwam. I was just complimenting them on the retake, but Zyver and River finds one each here, making it extremely easy for them to retake, but they need to be careful off the lurk. The, pr the hunter uh, from zero. the back. Oh, but I think oh, Phoenix wait. spotted him. Phoenix did spot him. He hits him with a blind, though, and then the teleport, so he doesn't know that he went into A-Link. Oh, he has been spotted at the back now. Swing! Oh, the pop and swing. Able to find it. Momentum is everything ring. here. You got to carry on past stop and drop the shot. He does just that. Juni spotted one and will be blind, though, and quick! He finds him all! 4K! He Quarter finds him all! Again! We Where needed his POE. Better be taking him out for a big old ice cream cone after this <laughs> game, baby. I want to see his POE so badly. He was, he got the flash, right? He knows that Juni is pushing him. So he just fires off a couple shot. Not only does he find the kill onto Juni, he finds the kill onto Zyber as well. That is just luck plus skill. Yeah, you know, I'm he's not... giving him the, the combination. I'm not sure if Zyver was blind there. I think Zyver was maybe trying to help swing to help out mm -hmm, the he blinded was, he member. Was. And he just kind of stepped into that one, unfortunately. So Pin Trafford able to dodge a bullet there and take another round as they've collectively got five so far. But the score fairly even here. Yeah, it's a very competitive matchup so far. m &A trying to cause some distraction. And Juni will find her looking somewhere else. She falls, but she was just the red herring. The distraction but I don't think that Johnstown falling for the bait as Zyver is just still holding. I think he spotted out someone there. Paranoia does come out. The Flash primed and ready. Oh he re-aggressively finds the first, but Zero will trade it out. And Amped let the load on the seas that he needs to delay. Wait for his teammate Resurrection on to Hello as well. Yeah, it was a nice flash by Zyver. Unfortunately, as he swung, there was just so many members in Garage. Big spray coming through the wall. A lot of damage done, and Suoms finds the two-piece. A oh, hello with a trade now down. Last and the one-player advantage favoring Johnstown. But from Red Herring, distraction to CB, now back to A. Zero will find the plant. The lone member gets caught on some big damage when he finds the headshot. Somehow able to stay alive. Two versus one, zero. He decides to peek back out. I like the idea, but unfortunate timing there. And was just running with his gun out. Just spots someone peeking. Like, all right, I'll take that free kill. And Johnstown will equalize the score five to five. I do like their strategy, but Johnstown, they're not falling for the bait no more. They're right. All right, guys. You guys got three members on A site. I trust you. We're not going to rotate. I really like that confidence in your teammate to not fast rotate. Yeah, man. I feel like it's always so tough to peek out of a smoke, especially when you don't have the intel or a blind to peek from. So I like the idea there. I think it might have benefited him a little bit more just to kind of sit in the smoke and see if they push into it. But mm -hmm. again, you, you, you never know. Maybe, you know. maybe you get some crazy play and it ends up being a clip. So, uh, you know, it's always easier said than done, especially when you're in the moment. Another fake here. From Penn Trafford using the seeker on that C site. But they're pivoting towards the A. You can see the oh. rotation. I think it's a successful bait as all members of Johnstown, they're pulling away from that A site. Yeah, Brim has started to realize, uh-oh, guys, we've been bamboozled. So River able to head back here near CT spawn. We'll swing out. The smoke comes in, has to back off a little bit. Smart wise decision as he waits for the team. The retake Ooh. once more. Quarter able to find Zyver early though. Again, lurking around mid. Zyver always pushing out garage and maybe quarter taking note to that as he finds his first initial pick, gives him the player advantage. And now they have complete control of the A site. Not only that, they have set up the crossfire onto site as well, making it 
even more difficult for them to peek out. You can see Am flash, and he gets taken out immediately by Zero, though. The TP, they don't check. Zero, the play, the 1 billion IQ play. Finds the kill and TP to their back. That's the triple kill. And Pen Trafford with that one play will secure them this round. Oh my. Zero, that was absolutely beautiful. Yeah, just a, a great play by Zero. I mean, he found that initial kill on Amp with a classic nonetheless as well. So, I mean, just big plays by Zero. A big round win for them. Able to get six so far. Ideally, you want to have maybe one or two more at, at a minimum on this offensive side. But uh, again, we talked about the the inability of Johnstown's agents to close the distance on that offensive side. So it very well could work out in their favor. We certainly knew that this was going to be a much closer match and a banger. It certainly is. Yeah, it's one heck of a game right now. Six to five. It's anyone's game at this point. Zero. Having so much money deciding to buy an operator. Testing his luck. Hoping for someone to peek out mid here. But you can see that Sage will immediately being deployed cutting out that B site. So no more B site option for Penn Trafford unless they want to spend a lot of time breaking this wall. Yeah, you know, I'm a, I'm a fan though. I always tell people when I see a wall, break it. Even if we don't go there, right? Mm -hmm. Let them let yep. them say, okay, now they can't go B. They're not going to push through B. There's a wall there. But if it's broken in their mind, okay, there's a potential that they exactly. could push here. So we have to put at least one person watching that angle. So I, I, I'm a firm believer. If you see a wall, break it. Unless, unless yeah. it's your own. Let me clarify. <laughs> this is your own. Yeah, exactly, yeah. because it it gives you a, a sense of security, right? If no mm -hmm. one's breaking that wall, you can just forget about that B side. But now that the wall has fallen, look at this. Zuom, he needs to be careful. That's why he's posted up mid. Oh, I that off shot, that. though. Misses out, but M&A with that flick onto the head. The micro adjustment finds the kill, dashes in. Taking position of this B side, Zyver, though. He knows he's aware to run it back, oh. running into the small. He finds the kill. Eminem went by. Eminem no. went by. Oh no, he still have HP. Eminem oh. needs to be careful. He will find the Let's kill. Eminem, that's three kill for her as well. Amp, one v three finds the first onto pillow. Now and he gets shots from the back quarter. We'll find the last kill. And Penn a Trafford. Phenomenal play by MA too. As, as the run it back comes in, MA hears the audio cue for the run it back, immediately pushes through the yep. smoke as Zyver pushes in, finds the kill on River. Zyver now has to turn around and come back because he knows <laughs> that she is yeah. sitting and waiting on that run it back to expire. Able to do just that, find some big key kills from MA to clutch up that final round before the halftime. That's what you need from your duelist, Eminem, having a bit of a slow start, but finishing off the first half strong with that three-kill uh, three kill play there at mid. Now onto that defender side. It's going to give her a lot of confidence to hold the position here. Not going for the Sheriff, only a Ghost holding the maybe a 2-1-2 on this Haven. Hole, on this Haven. You can see what will Johnstown do, though. Pushing to the side. No gap closer. Amped already oh. dinked up to 13 HP. No healer on his. Oh no, they do have a sage to heal him back up. They have been spotted here at A, and typically on those pistol rounds, teams swarm together. Ooh, again. Yeah, he, can, he just can't catch a break, man. He's just getting chopped down. <laughs> First, Much it was like, Amped. Uh... Yeah, I'm sorry. Much like Pin Trafford, though, Johnstown on that big rotation towards C. They're going to lurk Zyver here, though, maybe to try and keep a couple anchored here at A. But again, Johnstown looks like maybe they're even going back to A. Really not sure what they want to do here. Yeah, they want a double fake. But unfortunately, Pen Trafford, they're not moving. Quarter is still holding. Jump spotting, waiting for someone to peek out with M&A as well. Holding that short position. Zyver, though. Oh, he spots the leg amp. He spots out M&A. MA is now stuck. Water will find a kill on to Zyver finally. And now Water will have time to help out MA. Smokes left. will come out. 30 seconds left for Greater Johnstown. They need to make a make they need to make a decision. They are going back. Do they have time? Uh, they have time to get to at least B. But can they get into B though? You can see so many defender 14 <laughs> seconds left. Amped will use the dismiss to go in, but Pillow and Zero will find a kill. Amped though, nice traded back seven though. seconds, there's no time. They need to run, but Zero, they find the kill. And Ben Trafford will find that second pistol round.
Man, I think that John Sound was just maybe rotating just a bit too much there. They need to just make a plan and stick with it. Yeah, I, I, I like the idea, but again, I, I, once they came back to A that second time, at that point with the time that's on the clock, you especially being a pistol round, you just try to get in there and do what you can do. I think, you know, the idea was great, but there really just wasn't enough time. They had to run the entirety of the way to B. Pin Trafford heard him. You just saw him swarming like cockroaches <laughs> through the B site, and it was just, I think at that point, they knew they were in trouble, but... You know, pistol rounds a pistol round. You can you can fight back, come back. Uh, obviously, the second round is going to be a little tough, but that third round can make things happen. So, ooh, zero spots out so many players as Zyver with that flash running it down with the classic. So they have control of B side, but M and A is already on the flank. Zero finds the first kill onto M. Zyver though, the right click goes out. The classic will find a kill onto Pillow, and he's escaping his life as well, but not for long. As Zero and M and A plus quarter Woo! from the side, Spectres all around, fighting up the kill, picking up the pieces, and Pen Trafford not letting them escape with their lives. Yeah, I mean, great job by Zero there. Once spotting them all at mid, they know they have the weapons because it's round two, right? So don't give them those outnumbered engagements. Don't allow them to pick up a Spectre. He did a great job of falling back, allowing them to take the B site because they knew they had the weapons, right? So that retake's going to be in their favor. Quarter pops in, finds two of his own to finish it off as well. Now 21 and five for the day. So again, really just smart team play from Pin Trafford thus far. I really like the way they play as a team there. Quad and especially on especially M and A with pushing that A main as well. There is some proactive gameplay because most of the time when you a lot of players they would just peek out of A, they see no one, they fall back. But M and A, they just she just pushes in because again on the side of John Sound they had no Sentinel, they don't have anyone to watch their flank, so it just gives an opportunity, creates an opportunity for Pen Trafford to just flank them. Uh, looks like they are going to be pushing toward the seaside this time. Have a couple traps to get through, and Quarters waiting patiently. Able to find the 2K once again as he double dinks the headshots. Oh, straight through the smoke, and he finds one more MA on the flank yet again, and that is a wrap. A flawless round for Pen Trafford. This was their bonus round. Mm -hmm. It's their bonus round, Hot Sauce, and they got a flawless. In you this know, round, and, not dropping a single member. I don't know if Pin Trafford has been doing VOD reviews, but it's like they knew Johnstown was yeah. going C, right? Mm -hmm. They actually stacked yep. an extra member over there. They had the traps quarter tucked in the corner. And uh, again, I can't stress this enough, too, for, for newer players or maybe not as experienced players. If there's a smoke and a long haul, spray down it. Waste that ammo, especially when you have that silenced weapon. Uh, it's so many higher tier players or professionals get kills just by spraying through boxes or smokes. You know what I mean? It's, 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 it's a big thing. Especially when it's at C main, there's only a certain amount of angles you can hide in, right? It's a corridor, so just shoot. It's like shooting fish in a barrel. Well, M and A though, and again pushing up super aggressive. Like I said, no sentinel on the side of Greater Johnstown. Pillow though will find the first kill, and M and A from the back yet again find a kill onto Zuom. Dash activated, 27 HP. Falls back. Wait for the heal and wait for the reinforcement as they re-engage in, but River and Judy, wait a second, they're putting up a fight, but Quarter just sprays them down with the Phantom, and that's the 11th round for Penn Trafford. Yeah, and, and here's what worries me a bit, right? They lose their 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 buy round, and then they immediately buy into Spectres and a Marshall. We saw Ooh. KO with the Marshall and, yep. and a couple Spectres. So where does that affect the economy? It looks like they were still able to come away with a full buy here, so it doesn't actually... Uh, hurt them. I was a little worried about that when I saw that, but because of the loss bonus here, uh, you know, and and, and what yep. they've spent, still able to come away with a full buy. We see three phantoms and a vandal. However, if they don't win this round, they are going to be in a lot of trouble for match point. Yeah, they're giving up match point. Oh, Ams! A couple bullets as he sidesteps. Finds the head of quarter. Raid boss down for Penn Trafford as they pursued onto this A side. Their counter flash is perfect, but it does not matter. As Zyber already claims the life of MA on that back of A side. 
feel I feel like we've been casting together for a while now because you took the words right out of my mouth. I was thinking raid boss down when quarter fell. <laughs> and just that, the two-player advantage. With that, the spike will be planted. It's going to be a tough retake. Three members, one in heaven. With the oh. Cape and Zyver just below, lets them know, hey, it's time for you to go to that six-feet hole in the ground. Uh, hello, the last remaining member, Wilgie, sprayed down by Amp. And with that, Johnstown, the back's against the wall, but not ready to be done just yet. Only a six round deficit here for Greater Johnstown. Man, if Amp can replicate that shot again and again every single time, I think they're gonna have an easy attacker side because, you know, we mentioned that Quarter is the raid boss on Penn Trafford's side. Right? So when, Penn, when Quarter goes down, not only do they lose a firepower, which is quarter, they lose a lot of utility. They lose the flash, they lose the trailblazer and the heal as well. So taking out quarter is so, it's such a tremendous thing for Greater Johnstown. Oh, I mean, quarter has just been an absolute juggernaut time and time again, all these 4Ks and, and really big clutches for the team as well. Look at zero though, down into a cheeky spot here in mid, mm -hmm. tucked behind the smoke, crouched in as well. Amp is going to check. Oh, but Amp's on the head. He peeked up too soon. That is unfortunate. Amp, he was so aware, though. He was just waiting and checking the angle. Pillow falls. And now the B-side falls, too, as Quarter, though, runs in. Zyver, but Quarter finds a kill. 70 HP left. There's so oh. many targets to shoot at. He needs to fall back. Wait for reinforcement. Look at Zooms. He's just running in. But decides to fall back. But M and A, oh, she finds two kale. Oh no! Oh, Dontown, he swung air too they're early. spreading too thin. It's all up to Ants now. He finds a kill. One v one. Oh. But Hello will shut the dream down. We'll give Penn Trevor the match point. But Dontown, they spread themselves too thin. One yeah. was running A link. One was running C link. They need to play together there. Yeah, I think Suam's just got a little too aggressive wanting to find that kill on quarter. We saw M&A up top with the knives, but in the end, it was a hello who said, uh, hello over here and clutches <laughs> up the route with a nice kill. 7-9 on the board. Now sitting at match point as Pin Trafford looks to keep that playoff dream alive. Johnstown again, an insanely talented team uh, with just a plethora of phenomenal members on there, but they're not ready to be done yet. They have enough money here to sneak out a half buy, it would have seemed from most members, and uh, only Juni will be left without that rifle. Oh, Antho! He finds the kill in the same position again, Hotsauce, on to quarters. And now, MA left alone on this A side. She's in a really safe angle here, able to put down a few shots, hoping to test her luck. But this paranoia, maybe it's just a little bit too fast as Amp. It's unaffected by it, and now the Empress is popped. So look at the members. A Pen Trafford three member posted up at that CT spawn, waiting to push out. Juni finds the first ant as well. Zero, he fights back. He TPs into the smoke. Zero, can you do it again? Oh he my. finds the back. 1v3. Now there's so many target, and Johntown, they hold on. They are not giving up in this playoff. Yeah, I, I absolutely love these plays from Zero. And sometimes they work and sometimes they don't. But the, the big brain IQ plays, some really key clutch teleports as well, putting himself in phenomenal positioning. So, but with that being said, we see a bit of a, an economy issue over here for Pin Trafford. So I want to make sure they stay around that 2000 Ooh. mark. They definitely want to be able to buy next round. I know Cypher's uh, util can be expensive as well. So I want to see him get rid of that ghost and he does just that. <laughs> he he read your mind. He read your mind. You've heard us talking about the economy way too much. What are though? Oh, amps. And again, he finds the first blood, but zero. The quick flank. This could be bad. This could be dangerous for Johnstown. They have no sentinel. They're just waiting patiently. Pillow in the smoke. Wait, they just walk back to back, but it does not matter. Planted. Cyber will readjust zero finally on the flank, but on but only able to find one. No support as well because MA with the shorty shoots a few bullets. But the shorty needs to be close. Oh, wait a second. Oh wait, how is that not a kill? 
Oh man, I think the overheal had come in earlier, but again, honestly, wow. I, would have, I would have liked to see them get one more kill there, but we have to remember that was an eco round, right? There's yeah, shorties, it was an eco round. Classics, yep. So the fact that they even got two is good. They're taking away some of the guns, some of the economy. They have three rounds to give up yet, right? So it's not a bad play by them. It's a smart play. They find a couple kills. Now that they are in this full buy, though, they have to make sure they're not being overly aggressive at A. They can't allow Amp to find these early picks that, that yep. Amp has been finding on A. So they just need to play a little more reserve, do what's been working. They know they have the skill, fall in line, and just do what you do best and close it out. The thing I'm, the thing I'm worried about in this round is that... Uh, Zyver, he has to run it back. And that's just give him an extra life to play with. Smoke does come out, blocking the vision. And there we go. Zuoms running it down, but Quarter finds the oh. first, but it's on the run it back. So they has the info. They know the Quarter is here. Do they want to oh, rotate? Big damage to the smoke as well. She got sprayed through the smoke? Quarter was spraying through the smoke and just lit up, I think, Brim and maybe Sage, who are near death at this point. The health or the heal has already been used as well. And now Zero is going to push through this smoke, finding them on that rotation. This could be a big play from Zero. Oh. Did they hear him take a step? I don't think so. I don't think so. And they're just oh. running back's turn. Zero will yeah, find the, the first, spike. collect the spike as well. John oh, Sound, they have no spike. They don't have possession of spike. 35 seconds left. It's all down to this. Junie and Amp, they can't simply hold on. They need to fight back. It's all up to Amp. He finds two. 20 seconds left on the clock. And they are in for the kill. One left, one right. Oh, Amp no. finds the third one as well. 19 seconds left, but M&A. There it is. Finish the game, 13 to eight. Man, what a fantastic game. <laughs> Beautiful job. Oh. And you know, one key thing that stuck out to me there is in that final round quarter, tucked in the corner. And we always tell people, you hear Phoenix's run it back, try not to challenge. Well, there was nothing quarter could do, had to challenge. What did he do? Yep. The, the smartest thing he could. He never stopped moving. He continued to spray as he crossed left to right, able to find that run it back and apply significant damage, slowing that push down as well. Phenomenal counter smoke coming in from Omen and just a well, just just a great job by quarter there in the end. We see he had 27 kills, I think, 10 deaths, six first bloods as well. So in the end, Pin Trafford, who I think was technically the higher seed, right? The fifth seed. No, no, no. Pen, Pen, so. yeah, yeah. Pen Trafford is the fifth seed. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Not, yeah. yeah. They were, yeah, they were the, right. the higher, you know, the, the higher number. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Say mm -hmm, lower, mm -hmm. but, um, so, uh, again, but we knew that was going to be a close match, right? Uh, definitely a banger. If you're Johnstown, you got to go home with your heads held high. You played really, really well. That was well. a phenomenal game. Unfortunately, best of one, though, you know, and that that's that tough point. So, Greater Altoona, uh, I believe the champions from last year will head in uh, to that uh, that semifinal or quarterfinal, and uh, they'll be taking on Penn Trafford. This is the matchup that we wanted to see last year, right? I know Penn Trafford yes. has lost. <laughs> yes. uh, Penn Trafford has lost a couple key members from their previous season, some really high-ranked members, but this is how we thought it was going to be in the championship last year before Penn Trafford was upset. So we'll see it a little bit earlier than the championship, but we've got another a lot of great games coming up. You see there on the first at 3.30, Holidaysburg is going to be taking on Westmont Hilltop. And then an hour later, the same day, Winber will be taking on Forest Hills. But man, what a lot of phenomenal matches today, Mango. Yeah, there's so many clips as well, you know, like quarters, MA, every it's not just them, everyone on Penn Trefford's side and on the side of Greater Johnstown, they played phenomenal. But again, I think that their Asian selection came back to haunt them. Firstly, they have no sentinel, they have no one to watch their flanks. MA constantly, I think it was three rounds in a row that she flanked and got the kill from their back. And then they don't have any gap closer. They don't have any utility ability to close in to dash in onto site. That's why quarter has the uh, has the option to just tuck in a corner, just sprays them down. And it's not just one time. So many times that quarter just hides in a corner, sprays them as they not dash, not satchel in, walks in onto site. So I think that's the that's the problem with the Phoenix and the Raider. Maybe they mm -hmm. want to change it up so one Raider and one race, or one Raider and one Jet.
Something yeah, like and, that. And the no sentinel thing, right? Like we, not only do we see M&A flank, but we saw a double flank a lot of times with yep. both M&A and zero on that omen. So uh, again, really just not able to, to hold those flanks, kind of really missing that sentinel. But again, I want to remind everybody, this playoff action, they're all playing for one thing, right? To get to the championship, spring 2023 championship Ooh. coming up on May 20th. Pretty much an all-day thing from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern. And that's going to be at the glorious St. Francis University JFK Student Center once more. I'm really excited. I believe I'm going to be there in person casting oh. it. So I haven't got to see St. Francis yet, but I've heard a lot of wonderful things. We did have a chance to meet with a couple of the schools a couple of weeks ago, and it was a lot of fun. The students, the players, everybody uh, was just really wonderful. It was a great time down there. So. I certainly look forward uh, to the championship, but Mango, I believe that's going to be all for us today. Yep. Guys, we do have Rocket League tomorrow at 3.30 Eastern. There are four playoff games scheduled for that, so we certainly hope to see you guys tomorrow. But with that being said, hopefully everybody has a phenomenal week, and we'll see you next time. Peace out.